Hi everyone, my name is Alyssa Luce and I'm here today with Elizabeth. <laughs> so if you guys have been listening to the podcast for the past couple of weeks, you know we've been doing a few specials for you guys. And now there's a special special because we're here in person. Yay! So we also have our special guest with us, Dominique. Um, she's joining via Zoom because she's in another state and I came down for the weekend to enjoy some time in the sun and with the SVA Academy. So we're going to continue our Wednesday weekly special series via this beautiful pre-recorded session. So Dominique, say hi on your end. Hi, everybody. It's so good to be here again this week. I know, right? I'm so excited. How you doing, Elizabeth? Fantastic. Doing fantastic. Well, guys, as you all know, we really want to bring you guys some very powerful material in terms of reclaiming your life, right? Understanding your triggers, understanding your mental health. And we feel it's really important to dive deep into the reality of vulnerability. We're, we're just going to go right in because this is a heavy topic. This is something that people often struggle with no matter what age you are. Well, unless you're a kid, you're vulnerable all the time, but uh, <laughs> getting older, you, you often get hurt when you're vulnerable and you choose to close off more often. So we want to give you guys the tools and give you guys the systems you can implement on a daily basis to help with really being vulnerable and being true to yourself. So Dominique, since you're like the, a mindful mentor, coach, right? Have you ever had this conversation with your clients about being vulnerable? Absolutely. So one thing I'm going to add to what you've already shared is the overthinking. So typically, as we get older, because we have more context and experience, we overthink things. And that also can limit when we're vulnerable and really open to new opportunities. So absolutely, there, there's just so much going on. And it's, when I have a conversation with a client, it's helping them to really, again, pause for a little bit. Because there are a few things that are pretty critical for their success just in general, and which also applies here with being vulnerable, it is we can't control everything. So oftentimes, you're going into a situation where you want to say something, you want a new experience, but it's out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And you know that there are so many variables and you don't know what's really going to happen. But yeah. so I think coming with that acceptance that we are not in control of everything and even if even if things that we want to change, we can't change everything. So I think there needs to be first step is that level of acceptance and understanding about that piece, like that foundation. I also would say being vulnerable in whatever situation you're in with the details will vary. You need to be open and approach it with a positive approach, positive mindset. Don't go through all of the 10 scenarios of what could go wrong or what might happen that wouldn't be favorable to you. Because those are not the only scenarios. But there could be a hundred examples or a hundred outcomes, 99 could be positive, and one is uncertain, and we tend to focus on the one that's uncertain right. instead of looking at the possibilities of all those other 99 scenarios. So it's kind of going through that too, and really being honest with yourself, right? Because I can tell you things, but if you don't take the time to be honest with you, then you see that change and that shift to get to the benefits on the other side of being vulnerable. Am yeah. I making sense so far? A hundred percent. We actually, so I'm going to share, um, part of the reason why I'm here in Florida is because I attended the SVA tribe uh, retreat this past weekend and it was super powerful and Elizabeth actually got to go with us and experience the beach ceremony and I feel like that was pure vulnerability that entire ceremony do you mind sharing like your experience with it oh no definitely um 
yeah, it was, I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. Uh, whatsoever. Um, and to be honest, I was somewhat a little bit, I guess, what, pessimistic? <laughs> about, because I'm like, okay, uh, we, we got to, you know, bring flowers. We got to have all these other things. And there's some, you know, rituals, I guess, involved. And I'm like, okay, what am I going to be up for? And then, of course, you walk on the beach and then we're all in the same color scheme. And, you know, you notice people around you looking, you know, they're also wondering what, <laughs> what are these people up to? <laughs> so, um, so that in turn, I felt vulnerable at that that initial stage because of course I don't need that you know I don't really know but because I trust Alyssa I, I was willing to take that you know that step but then once I got in the midst with everyone and I felt safe um, enough that I could share and that I you know I didn't feel like I was being judged for whatever crazy thing I wanted to do at that very moment. Um, I just, I just basically surrendered. That's the only way that I can express it was that I, you know, I surrendered to that whole experience. And when I was finished, I was telling Alyssa that I actually got a ticket, a parking ticket. Yeah. And you know, usually you get a parking ticket, you somewhat like really ticked off because you're like what the hell I got a parking ticket but I was floating I was like oh I got a parking ticket as a matter of fact I didn't even realize I got a parking ticket which I didn't tell you this part uh oh I was driving down the highway pretty much and I see the ticket fly oh. floating <laughs> <laughs> under the windshield wiper so I decide I'm like okay I guess I better pull over and get this ticket off so that just in case I know what, you know. Yeah. So I pulled off to the side, got the ticket, put it in my purse, and then kept kept on going. Oh, man. And yeah. then she even texts me saying that and with a smiley face, like, I got a ticket. And not even sarcastically, but it's because she was already released, like, all the negativity from her at the ceremony that it's just like, huh, yeah, just a piece of paper. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that was just the price of admission. You got to take it. Oh well, but Hello. you you needed to be there. You yes, to be there. yes. So what I love about that sharing of your own um, experience as that example is all of those thoughts that you express. Those are natural and they're human, and we're going to have them. That he is not allowing those thoughts and those feelings and those misconceptions to prevent us from taking action. So I want to applaud you for doing that because yeah. you did get to the other side. So I'm going to give you a smack right now. <laughs> Indeed, ma'am. And you brought up two really great points. You were saying that you trusted me and then you surrendered after feeling safe. And I feel like oftentimes we're betrayed so much in our lifetime that we just learn not to trust anybody. but what it really means is you don't even trust yourself to be able to know if you could trust the other person like you are like man i i trusted my gut so many times with other people and they still ended up hurting me so like now i i don't even trust my own gut if it's telling me to trust this person right and, and again i mean those things are valid those feelings are valid and it's natural when we have that experience, the prior experience, it becomes a part of our thought process. But at the same time, everything in life is risk. So what you can do is establish boundaries so you know how much risk you're willing to take on. So it doesn't mean you have to cut someone off completely. It just means mm, I won't do that with them, but I will do this with them. So right. it's helping to release that you hurt me in the past and I'm done with you. Or that wasn't a good experience. Maybe it wasn't really a good judge of character. So now I'm not taking on any new relationships, friendships, experiences. That's not really the life we're supposed to live. Right. So it's, it's helping, it's taking those lessons and even improving maybe our decision-making process 
as it relates to people and making decisions about experiences. Right. And, you know, I really want to bring attention and awareness to, like, how all this is, yes, the mindset, but it's also, like, you are one being, right? You're a person, and there's other people who are also beings and people. Sure. So we all have a brain. We all have our own thought processes, and we also have our own bodies. But there's, like, another level that's not visible, and it's also not communicatable to another human unless they also know what it is. And what I'm, I'm trying to hit on is the spiritual aspect of being human. And the reason why I bring it up is because when you are vulnerable, you are reaching into that, that deep spiritual aspect. You are reaching into that presence that you know is there but you don't know what to call it and sometimes we can feel like it's gone sometimes we can feel like it's clouded like there's there's energies around you that shouldn't be there and oftentimes we can be completely running away from even having to feel it all of those things you know Definitely. Like, I feel like in today's world, we're so disconnected from that other realm because there's so much sensory distraction, I like to call it, right? We have all this technology we watch. We have the crazy music we listen to. We have all these weird foods we eat. And then if you're always working, you know, you're always using your hands. Like, there's no time to just be with, with self and be with that energy. To be still. Yes, yeah. to be still. You know, we brought this up multiple times already, how important it is to be still. So in that kind of progression of accepting that we can't, we can't be in control of everything, thinking positively, we also need to be in the present. We need to live in the present, not be thinking about all of those other things that happened in the past or, well, these three things could happen in the future if I do this. Just focus on the present. Right. And we don't do enough of that because we're on the phone. We're thinking of that email we need to send. We're always on the next step or this week or whatever, but are we living in the present? Yeah, it's so important. And being there at the beach yesterday, right? That was, if I felt like that was the longest day ever. Because I woke up at like 5 o'clock in the morning. We got to the beach at 6.30. We didn't leave the beach till maybe like, you know, 11, 12 o'clock. And we did so much in that span of time. Yeah, yeah. And like, because we didn't even start immediately at 6.30. You know, we had to wait for everyone to get there. And then there, it was like a step-by-step process, right? Because, you know, sometimes you can just think, oh, like, in this moment, I'm going to just go for it. I'm going to just, you know, go with my gut. I'm going to just let it happen. But it, it is little baby steps that you take for you to get to that full openness. Like, even while you were explaining your experience, you said, you know, it was the steps that took for you to really open up fully. Oh, yeah. And I bring it up because I don't want people to think, like, no, you have to be like this all the time. Or, like, no, it should happen, like, tomorrow. Like, no, it, you got to take those steps, you know? So we, we want to bring awareness to what those steps are for you guys. So what would you say is, like, a really good tool to opening up to someone or like even opening up to yourself really right so i'm always gonna go back to what grounds us which is that reflective time with self and i know it sounds so simple and it's like why do you always say that but if you don't spend time with self then you will be so influenced by everything else that you don't understand yourself so i would say the first thing is be one with your mind and being still. That's what's going to help you really understand what steps you need to take because you're going to be able to align yourself with what are the things you want to do, what are the steps I need to take there to get there, and what are the experiences that I want. If that makes sense. Yeah, a hundred percent it makes sense. And does it also play into 
being whether you are more of a pessimistic thinker or a, or a more um, positive thinker, does that come into play into how you operate with regards to still when you're when you're with yourself to to think more positively? That's what I'm that's what I'm trying to get. At. So actually, one of the things that I like to do is kind of an exercise that's wordplay. So perhaps we could spend a few minutes doing that if, if you guys want to play along. Yes, let's do it. And you know what? You guys should play it at home too. <laughs> Absolutely. So get your get your pen and paper or your pencil and paper. There's something where you can jot these things out. So this is something that is so important because it plays into that mindset stuff. So okay. words, we use words to communicate, right? It's yes. in our thoughts, it's in our language, but they're very powerful, right? So I actually saw the stat that I love to share because no one believes this. You would never come up with this number. If you said how many words on average do we use a day? And that number is about 20,000 words a day is what we use. Nice. So if we think about, wow, that's a lot of words, whether that's in thought, in email, in conversation, how many of those words are more positive than not? So, whoa. We froze. <laughs> the gremlins got us. The gremlins got us and froze us out. <laughs> you okay, okay, say it one more time. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, uh, no, no, no worries. So it's like a word association game where we'll say a word and then you write down what are the thoughts that come up because that's mm -hmm. what's going to be telling is where you are kind of on that spectrum. Mm -hmm. So for example, the word boundaries. Boundaries is a word that's used pretty frequently these days because as we are more heightened, we have more heightened awareness of mental health and self-care, we always talk about boundaries. But do you, when you hear the word boundaries, does that have a positive connotation or a negative connotation? That's true. Well, I use it as a positive. I personally use it as a positive because like, it, it protects me. A boundary is more of a, like a, a helmet, a shield, an armor. Okay. That's what boundary is to me. It's positive. Okay. What about you? Yeah, to me, and I even have it on my, one of my t-shirts from Awesome Palm. <laughs> <laughs> Boundaries plus self equals self-care. Hello. Okay. <laughs> no, I could see how it could be used as a negative though. Like, you know, boundaries could be like, Oh no no no! Like, it, I like this is this is as far as I can go. Exactly, where it's a barrier to something. Yes, mm -hmm. a barrier versus an armor. Ooh, ooh! Give me another one. Give me another one. <laughs> discipline. Okay, I honestly, discipline for me means more like. I can see how in the past it's more strict. Nobody likes a strict parent, right? They're like, oh, you have to do this. You have to do this. You have to. So I can see how I have a negative connotation with discipline. And it's like, I want to be more free. And it's funny too, because this past weekend, I made a whole schedule for myself. And the schedule is like uh, breakfast, yoga, meditate, journal, like that kind of thing. And in a weekly basis, like Monday, study, Tuesday, write, three, like, like that. And I was like, I do way too much just free for all and I have no structure. So now I'm associated discipline with structure. And that's how I think of discipline. Yeah. Structure. Because oftentimes I'm a free spirit and I have a lot of things going on in my head too. So I always say I need to be more disciplined, even with my diet. I need to be more disciplined with what I put in my mouth, what I, you know, that type of thing. So I, for me, it's, it's, I think of it more of a, a positive. Mm, that's a good one too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Another one. I like this. <laughs> Oh, I love change. Okay. Free, free, free little exercise for you all. 
This one's in my uh, coloring book. It's the mini Light of Your Life coloring book. If you want to go on my website and purchase it, please feel free. And I have a page on there that explains for children to draw the different seasons, draw themselves in the different seasons to get them used to the idea of change because it is necessary, it is constant, and it is a part of living, you know? Definitely. What about you? What do you think of change? Um, I, I say change is good. Yeah. Yeah, because who wants to stay in the same foreign spot, doing the same old thing every day? I know I don't. <laughs> I don't. So I welcome change because that's how you grow. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I definitely can see, though, how people will, like, look at change like, oh, I hate doing different things. Like, every time I do different things, like, it's the worst, like, you know? And it, it I feel like it definitely goes in your with your experiences of the last time you had a change. The last time some, someone told you you needed a big change and you didn't have a good outcome throughout that change because you were dreading it so much yeah right but i mean mother nature has established has created this this blueprint of change yeah be beautiful in mother nature so it's really opening up to yes i may need to do something differently i may need to drive a new way because they did a new road for example so i i can't do that route anymore i need a new route whatever the change is it's not necessarily bad yeah. It's just a different point of view. So something is going to be different, but the different doesn't mean bad. And I think some people thrive very much on team. So when that has to change, that's where it can become a little bit dicey. So, okay, yes. Yeah. I'll, I'll throw one good. more. I'll throw one. Yes, yes one yes, more. One I'm more. glad we're on the same page. <laughs> okay, what is it? Family. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh my gosh, that could be complicated. Exactly. Go ahead. Okay, family. I think family is definitely, I want to say positive, but I know I don't mean it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you know, because like you, you want to love family. You're like, this is my blood. This is the people who are part of me. But at the same time, I feel like family it, it can come with its burdens, and you don't want to deal with other people's burdens. However, I recently started expressing how it is possible to choose your own family. Like, I call people, like, I, I think of Elizabeth as my family, you know? Like, all my friends, like, they're, they're my family at the end of the day. Like, yeah, you know, we could be cool and hanging out, but if I, if I share with you, if I, if I experience with you, if, if we connect on a deep level, that's family, you know? So I want to say, I want to say it's negative just because of my past conditioning and like experiences that I'm still not over, but I'm trying to evolve it into a big positive. Yeah. What about you? <laughs> oh, it's, it's, yeah, it's a mixed bag, you know? Um, family, it depends on the day sometimes. Yeah. You know? <laughs> So, um, yeah, sometimes family can lift you up. So they can tear you down. Oftentimes worse than somebody outside because, of course, they know you. They know. And, they, and, yeah. and you have a higher level of expectation mm -hmm. because they're family, that they're not going to harm you. But there's no guarantee because at the end of the day, we're all human. Right. Right. And we're all flawed human beings. And because we're flawed human beings, we mess up big time. Right. So for me, um, I have my boundaries, right, that I set. Um, and I just know that there's certain family members, like you said before, Certain family members I'll do things with, I'll go to a certain level with, and then certain family members I won't. Right. And it's okay. I was it just about, okay. you feel the words from my mouth. It is absolutely okay. And, and that's part of the growth. And the reason why family is in there is to understand some of these nuances that are going to be specific to a client that I'm working with. 
And mm -hmm. as you said, Elizabeth, I mean, your family knows you. So this is not just a stranger who says something to you. This is someone who has more context, who probably okay. knows where you're with. Yeah, so that's the tricky thing with family. It's really, this, this is one of the words that generally has more discussion and conversation because it's important to understand the nuances with each client because your answer to family will be different than the next person and the why. So getting a little bit more information because as you said, Elizabeth, family is really tricky because they know more about you. They know where you're sensitive, but a lot of times they don't care. They can say whatever they want to. And so the pain is really deeper when these critiques and these put downs come from family versus a stranger. Mm -hmm. So, and having that typically is a common theme. So it's not that they just started doing that today. They were likely doing it for most of your interaction. So over time, that really does wear up on you. So understanding some of those heavier, not great experiences that will part of what we try to do during discovery to help build that plan. Right. And I want to add on, um, cause you brought up, you know, sometimes we feel like they don't care. And recently I was having a conversation with one of my friends and she was expressing how she fights with her significant other because she feels like sometimes he doesn't care. And I want to plant a seed for anyone listening. It's not that people don't care. They may genuinely just not know your rules. They may genuinely not know what is most important to you. They may genuinely not know what will harm you. And they may genuinely not know an alternate way to communicate what they really mean. Because oftentimes, I even get caught in the pattern of expressing things and people take it as me being aggressive. And I'm like, how am I being aggressive? Like, I'm even confused. She's just a confident <laughs> woman. And sometimes people are just not used to yeah. that type of confidence. And not yeah. only like that confidence, but just like, you know, sometimes people have the best interest at heart and they just want to get straight to the point, but you're not even willing to receive it you know and you're just feeling like oh you have no consideration for my feelings but it's like i do it's just i'm tired of seeing you going through the same thing over and over like you need you need a wake-up call today you need change <laughs> you need change <laughs> and we you know but of course change can be hard if you're not ready and and we as humans need stability it's it's necessary for like you not to be in survival so earlier i brought up right there's a spiritual aspect here that's where the real stability is because once you're within yourself once you're with it's connected with your mind your body spiritually now it doesn't matter where you are it doesn't matter who you're around it doesn't matter what you're doing you are already stable within so you don't need stability around you because you're bringing the stability. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything yeah. you wanted to add? No, I mean, you, I mean, you said it in a, in a nutshell, <laughs> to be honest. You did. <sighs> um, but yeah, but people, I think also people probably need to think of things differently. Yeah. When I say think of things differently, think of their care differently, care for themselves differently. Right. Because they don't often, because they're always doing, and the things that they put value on is different than, um, they put more value oftentimes on the external. Right. You know, uh, let's say, you know, what's the nicest car I can get, or, you know, the designer bag, uh, you know, because there's all of these other things that are coming from the outside that's that's constantly, that's sensory, that's constantly feeding that those images uh, to you. You just get caught up. So I think that people just need to not only get with themselves, 
and be still, you know, close out the distractions, get in nature. We discussed that before. Get That's in very nature. important. You know, treat yourself kind, be kind to yourself, right? Hydrate. Mm -hmm. Hydration is very important. And I don't mean alcoholic hydration, okay? I mean, those are all those things that come into play that helps to help to feed your body, feed your mind, and get you into the right type of space and environment that you can think straight to to actually improve things in your life and you know improve your relationships. Yeah, yeah, and it, it is possible too. And it's it's I I always struggle with the the phrase of well, it's not going to happen overnight. No, it's a lifetime journey. You're right. It's not going to happen overnight, but you can take little steps every minute of every day. You want to get 1% better, not 50% better every day. It is about progress and being intentional. Yes. So as long as you're intentional, you will see movement. But setting a realistic expectation is key because you're not going to have it like this in one step. Especially when things take years to get to that point, why would it take a week to get to your optimal goal? That's, that's not realistic. So establishing the, that cadence of intent and communicating what your intent reminds. So be vulnerable so that you can share, this is what I need from you. And be ready to receive. Um, some pushback because that, that may happen, but that's okay. You establish your boundaries, you say what your intentions are and your expectations because we are living boldly. That's what we're doing here. Yes, we are. Yes. <laughs> well, guys, we are going to bring you some tools next week. We are going to be, well, I say we, and really it's Dominique. So, a little round of applause for Dominique because. Yes. I appreciate you so much for bringing you your joy, bringing your your knowledge to us, and really helping people on a, a deeper level. Because these conversations need to be had. They need to be. They need to be had in any age, any ethnicity, any gender. Okay, any walk of life. We need to talk about these things because knowledge takes you a long way. Right. Once you know something, you can't unknow it, and it's so much easier to apply it versus not knowing and just being willy-nilly, <laughs> right? So Dominique has been a saint, and she's actually going to be giving you guys some free materials to help you really get in check with your thought processes and really helping you get the life you deserve at the end of the day, not just the one you want, but the one you truly deserve. Yeah, I do, I do want to leave us with a quote. Because we're Please. talking about being vulnerable. And the quote says, The greatest mistake you can make in life is to be continually fearing you will make one. Mm -hmm. so you say it one more time for those who weren't listening. <laughs> the greatest mistake you can make in life is to be continually fearing you will make one. And that's Hubbard. So Albert knew what he was talking about. You, you've got to take action. You've got to take the risk to be vulnerable. Yes. Be vulnerable and start with yourself. Start small. Start with, you know, who you can control. And then you can control who else you're vulnerable with. But if you're never even vulnerable with yourself, it's like you can't be vulnerable with anyone else, you know? So before we leave off, any last words? Create more joy in your life. Yeah. Right? Create more joy in your life. And thank you all for listening. Thank you all for watching if you're watching via YouTube. And thank you, Dominique and Elizabeth. We're going to come back with one more episode to this three-part series. But so far, it's going great, and I hope you guys are enjoying it. If you have any specific things you need help with, please ask. We're here to help you in any way we can. Yes. So, yes, thank you, and we'll see you and talk to you guys next week. Bye! Bye.